Welcome to my madness, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at um, a little uh, repaint custom kit bash thing that I did. Um, honestly, because I found an old school Kenner Millennium Falcon for $7. Now, it was missing some pieces. Um, it had quite a few pieces missing. I say quite a few. It was missing the canopy and the glass. It was the missing the glass for the turrets. It was missing the turret. It was missing the, uh, the, the door down here at the bottom, uh, missing the dish, uh, missing some of the basic stuff that you see a lot of Millennium Falcons missing. And I thought, but you know what? For $7, maybe I can do something cool with it. And this is what I came up with. Now, first off, the things that I had to buy were all those things that were mentioned, or I had to 3D print them. For instance, the turrets here, are 3d printed i've got one on top and on this one as i'll show you here in just a minute uh, i also printed off another one to put onto the bottom as the millennium falcon or in this case the not millennium falcon should have a turret on the top and the bottom um, i also 3d printed the door down here on the bottom the uh the hatch there um, i did some other 3d printing here and there little things i 3d printed some greebles uh, that I'll show you here on this thing to add some some differences here to this as opposed to the Millennium Falcon and the idea behind this was What if someone else whether that be a mercenary or an assassin or somebody else had gotten a hold of a YT 1300 freighter and How would they have done it because we know how Han Solo did it? You know he put all his time and effort into making it the fastest it could be and that was it but what if somebody else went a different route? What if somebody spent more time, I don't know, uh, putting you know time and effort into defense and offense of this particular you know, YT-1300 freighter? And that's kind of what I went with here because I just wanted to do something cool and different. Because again, I spent $7 on this. Um, I did spend about another 35 bucks buying some parts here and there. I did have to buy the canopy. I had to buy this glass right here. I think I bought something else on here. I don't remember exactly what. Oh, I had to buy the rear landing gear as well because uh, that was missing. Everything else that I did, um, I 3D printed. And I wanted to show you guys that. I also 3D printed the, uh, uh, the, the dish there, which I did some modifications to. But I wanted to show you guys kind of what it looks like here. So we've got a uh, black ship that I did some red accents to. And then I did a lot of just weathering with some uh, silver paint on there uh, to kind of make it look kind of old and beat up. And we see on the bottom as well, lots of little detail work with the red. That's honestly what took the longest. And then just coming back and just like weathering the edges here and just making everything look nice and worn. You see all the detail there when I did a, a silver dry brush over all the details and just kind of made it pop as much as possible. A lot of uh, weathering there on the uh, on the uh, uh, landing gear and that kind of stuff. You can see this is the piece that I 3D printed here, this landing door that comes open. So that was 3D printed. Um, also put the, uh, the turret there down at the bottom, as you can see. Now, because it doesn't come with a mount there, I had to make a mount and it doesn't swivel or anything, but it is there so that's nice um and then as far as the other parts that i 3d printed kind of the main one here is this piece right here and this is in sections actually and what what i wanted to kind of go with is you know what if somebody put an actual shield generator on this small little ship well that's a very large piece of equipment so it wouldn't be something that would be inside the ship it would be something big and bulky sticking off the top and that's what i came up with here was these pieces that I 3D printed and uh, had them attached to the top. I also printed these um, these extensions here for the exhaust ports, uh, make it a little more efficient. We've got lots of little things here, little port there that I that I added on. Uh, these here, these here, here, uh, little pieces like here and here. And these two pieces up at the front those are all add-ons things that are not on the original mold that i just wanted to add some texture to this more so uh, than it already had 
Uh, in addition to just doing the paint job and making it look worn and stuff like that. Now, obviously the two biggest things that I added to this printing this off are going to be the guns that you see here on the side. And so what these are is these are at at guns and I printed four of them off. And so we've got to kind of turn it around here, give you a better look. We've got two on each side because I figure, you know what, if this was a mercenary or something like that, uh, he would salvage what guns he could find, like these large cannons off of an AT AT, and add them to his ship. So we've got one on each side, or I should say two on each side. So he's got four AT AT cannons there. Of course, there we can see the uh, dish that I modified there and uh, made it just a little bit different than uh, the Millennium Falcon's dish. And we see more of the, the detailing in here from the dry brushing, which pops off really nice, I think. And then those uh, two pieces in the front that I added. Um, so it was just kind of just playing around and doing a little bit of a project because I, you know, again, I, I didn't spend a lot of money on this. Again, with the 35 bucks and random pieces that I bought, the paint, um, $7 for the ship itself. Um, you know, I, 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 I've, I've got, you know, less than less than $50 in this, like $45 in this total, to just do something different and cool and unique because I already have a Millennium Falcon. I already have an original 1978 Kenner that is complete, that I've got hanging up on display. Um, and so to find one really cheap like this and just do something cool and different with it and just adding some details. And, and again, this is this is the Star Wars universe. You know, there's, there's more than one YT-1300 freighter out there. In fact, in lore, it's one of the most sought after and common freighter ships out there because, you know, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's, it's so, um, you know, user friendly. It, it's so, uh, easy to to tweak and modify to the owner's specifications and that's one of the beautiful things about the the Carillion uh, YT series freighters and so I thought you know to go along with that what would somebody else do with one of these and this is what I came up with again it's got a little bit of a Sith look to it because I went with black and and red um, but you know what why not maybe maybe it was a Sith user that grabbed a hold of one of these and turned it into a an offensive and defensive powerhouse. I don't know, but the idea was just to do something cool and different. So I wanted to show you guys what I was able to do. Again, um, lots of little detail work on the red, painting all the little details, because there are a lot of details on this original Kenner mold. Really, really cool details on this for something made in 1978. And, and being able to go over that and do the whole thing in black and then come over with the red and then go over it with the silver to bring out the details and add wear and tear uh, and some personality to this thing. It was a lot of fun. It took me about a week in my spare time going through and doing this. Um, the only thing I really didn't do is I, I didn't do the interior back here, which I will do at a later point. I just hadn't decided what I wanted to do with the interior. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that later on. But for now, did the exterior. Um, and total, I've got like $45 in it. And I think for $45, bucks, it came out looking pretty cool. So there you are. You can have a little bit of fun with some old beat-up toys that you find at you know a flea market or people selling pieces on eBay or whatever it may be, garage sale, who knows. You can do some really cool stuff with it really cheap and just kind of have something cool to add to your collection. And, um, you know, that's what I did here. I just wanted to show you guys that and show you how you can uh, you can do some cool stuff for not a lot of money. But that is it, guys. I appreciate you watching. As always, uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. And always remember to enjoy your collection.